Retail Cafe by ET Retail. We are here to make your Monday mornings more interesting. And to add some more blink to it today, we have with us Nilesh Gupta, who is the director of Vijay Sales. He took his dad's vision forward. Nanu Gupta saw a vision in 1967 and started this brand Vijay Sales. Nilesh joined, then his brother Ashish joined, and now Nilesh's son has also joined this business. And they all are working together to take the brand to new heights. Nilesh, welcome to our new episode of ET Retail Cafe. So, Thank you for having me. So tell me, uh, what was the idea behind joining the family business? It was you who always wanted to be a part of it? Or was it like your dad pushed you to be a part of it? So I'll tell you what happens is uh, when I was in school, I wanted to become a doctor. And dad definitely realized that if he becomes a doctor, then he's not going to be a part of the business. And at that time, the business was very small. So when I was in school, it was only one shop of Vijay Sales at mine, which he had started. But he could see that this business will grow into something bigger. Not, I'm sure even he did not envisage that it can grow to this size. But he was always wanting me to come in the business. So he didn't stop me at that time. He said, why don't you take science? And then you decide later on whether you want to go for medicine or for engineering. But when the time came to select, he said, uh, instead of doctor, why don't you become an engineer? And I think uh, we are from that generation where you cannot put your uh, dad's words uh, down and you have to agree to it. So I would not say half-heartedly, but yes, with a little tinge of salt, I agreed to get into engineering. But uh, I'll tell you something. The most important fact is after I completed my engineering and joined the business, I realized one thing. I was not cut off for science. I was actually cut off for business. So I should have actually taken commerce and then an MBA. I think that would have helped me a lot. But uh, science engineering did help me in one way that it started giving me a line of thinking where I could think logically. And I think that has always been there with me. Uh, touch wood. So this is how the journey began of mine. But my, I think, business learning started at a very young age. Okay. So when I was in school, say from 6th, 7th standard onwards, I used to listen to all the dad's conversation at home when he used to talk with his business uh, friends or his vendors. And every Monday, which was uh, dad's weekly off at that time, a few of his, uh, two or three of his friends used to come to home for lunch. And then they used to go to meet uh, one or two brands, uh, vendors. So when they were having lunch also, they were only discussing business. And I used to be a part of that uh, discussion in the sense hearing it. So somehow the other I got interested. And uh, I, if I remember right, right from uh, seven standard vacation onwards, every summer vacation, I used to land up in the store and do something or the other, just observe and all. And I think this is how my initiation into business happened. And I think this is what happens in a business family. Uh, nobody pushes you in, but somehow or the other you get into it and you enjoy doing it. And I've never regretted it. So I tell you, parents know how to train their kids when they are young. And they, they, in a way, they, he was training you. I mean, when he was having discussions at home, I mean, you were observing him, he was training you in directly or indirectly. Right. That is. So tell me one thing, you must have seen the child, the consumer behavior at that point of time in 92 when you joined. How was the consumer behavior at that point of time? And how it has changed over the years to today? Oh, the consumer behavior, I think, has totally, it's a 360 degree turnaround. So just to give you a, one or two examples, when I joined the business, I used to be on the sales floor, I used to be selling. To each and every consumer at that time, his first ask was, how long will it last? So longevity was the first thing which mattered them while deciding which product to buy. And today, cut that to today circa, no consumer asks how long will it last. <laughs> what they are saying is, is it value for money? Is it the latest product? And what are the good EMIs which we can get? So I think... Now, longevity is a thing of the past because nobody uses the product till the uh, life uh, of the product. Before that, they want to upgrade, they want to change. Then second uh, change, major change which has happened is, in those days, buying on uh, EMIs, buying on loan was as good as a tablet. And even those consumers who used to buy on loans never used to tell their family and friends that they bought a television on loan. <laughs> so this was, uh, and today, if you don't take on loan, and if you, supposing there are two friends talking, okay, yesterday I bought a television and he says, okay, how did you buy it? Which EMI did you take? And he says, I paid cash. So the other guy will say, are you mad? In a consumer developers, you don't have to pay any interest. It's a zero down payment. Why did you buy in uh, cash? 
So I think that's a mind shift which has changed, where consumers are no longer wary of picking up loan, and I think that's gone across uh, the categories. So we are going the Western way, where uh, before the salary comes, it is decided how it is going to go. In fact, it hits the bank, and uh, the bank, uh, all the EMIs take away the salary, and uh, what your shift is, just what you need for your month uh, things. So I think this is the biggest shift which has happened. So, but Nilesh, as you've seen the consumer behavior changing over the years, what sort of changes being a leader you brought into the business uh, and how is, it, how is it matching with the vision that your father saw? So, uh, here I would want to say one thing. Uh, I have huge respect for dad, for the vision which he had and even at the age of 81 which he has today. So, he could possibly visualize what's going to happen. I still remember when we took our Goregaon West showroom, which is a four-story showroom, but each story is not more than 1,200 square feet. So in today's time, it is a very small store. It is one of our smallest stores. But at that time, when we took, the entire industry told him, hey, boss, Vijay says has gone mad. Uh, you don't have so many products. And why do you need a building uh, for electronics? But I think that vision of his, and he always grew from strength to strength, having much more bigger stores, having more, more and more products on display. I think that vision of his, uh, he was ahead of his times. So I still remember we were the, he was the only one, even in those black and white TV days, where uh, from the morning to night, once the shutter is up, uh, once the shutter is up, he used to switch on the televisions, uh, even when the color TVs came in. Whereas all the other retailers in the country used to keep the TV shut, and when a consumer used to walk in, yeah. at that time they used to switch on and show. And then once I asked him, Dad, why are you doing this? It's a lot of electricity which is going in. He said when the consumer comes in and you switch it off, the consumer feels that the store is not doing so well. And it's only when, and they're so particular about it, and he'll not get a good experience. As when he walks in and he sees all the TVs on, that's a different experience altogether. So I think he was always ahead. Another thing where he was always ahead of his time was branding. In those days, I remember putting up a signage uh, was also expensive effect. So normally the brands used to, provide free signage and so there in the signboard 80% used to be the brand and 20% used to give to the store name. Okay. So I remember dad telling me okay, even initially he used to do that but what happened was his first signage was a Bharat TV signage in the 70s which was a very bright yellow and red board and uh, the store came to be known as Bharat TV. After 3-4 years the Bharat TV brand won now. So he changed the board to Diana. So the store came to know, be known as Diana at the shop. <laughs> that is the time when he realized, okay, the brands will come and go, but I am here to stay. So I am not going to put any brand name on the my signboard. It will be only Vijay Oh, that's So I nice. think in spite of not being from a marketing background or from an MBA or anything, he had these insights at the early age. And this is what got me also learning. And as I... I've read, I meet a lot of marketers, I meet a lot of IM guys, MBAs, and whatever they tell me, or whatever I've read, and I, when I look back, I said, Dad, without knowing, without reading, he's done this journey in much similar fashion. <laughs> but what changes did you and your brother brought into the business that it took you to new heights? So I'll tell you, from concept point of view, from strategy point of view, I think Dad has always been the focal even till today. But what happened when myself and my younger brother came in, Ashish came in, I think he got the uh, most strength. So it was like uh, his vision was there and we were the executioners. Okay. And he had full trust in us. And luckily for us, normally there are a lot of differences of opinion. There's a lot of issues which happens. I think we were always on the same page. And a few times when we were not on the same page, both of us knew one thing, hey, let us have a debate between all three of us. But whatever the final decision is taken, let's go and implement that. So I think that is what happened. So I think the first major change which uh, came with our generation coming in was getting into digital category. Okay. So earlier we were only selling consumer durables, television, refrigerator, washing machines. Then we got into mobiles and laptops and accessories. So accessories was quite recent, maybe five, seven years back only. But mobile and laptops has been there for quite some time. So this was, I'm talking of the Nokia days, where Nokia used to have 80% of the market share. Yeah. So any brand which has such a high market share will not give you margin. So we were in those days getting only 4-5% to 5 margin. 
So frankly speaking, it was not a great business to be in. But you needed the uh, business to get in the consumer. Because if you will not sell phone, and if the consumer goes to some other store to buy a phone, then you may buy television as well from there. So, and we had a lot of issues. There was always, that category in the beginning was bleeding. So in one of the meetings I remember, uh, all three of us were there, plus there were four or five senior team members of ours. So one of the senior team members said, hey, I think we should exit this category for the simple reason it's bleeding. So this is where I feel that acumen comes in. He said, no, I know it is bleeding today, but it's a necessary category. And one day we'll start making money from it. We cannot exit. And I think today our bleeding category has become uh, mobile along with televisions. Oh, that's great. <laughs> As a person. So I think that is where, uh, that was one big change which we got in. Then we, I'll, uh, another example I'll give you is, in those days there was Octroi. So you had a Mumbai Octroi, yeah. Ane Octroi, uh, Washi Octroi and all. So we only had stores in the Mumbai region. And we were thinking of going into the Thana stores. Okay. Uh, Thana. But we were always skeptical and I think we delayed a, decision to get in, open a store in Thane because we felt what if uh, some product doesn't sell there and we have to bring it to uh, Mumbai and vice versa then we'll be losing 5% five, five of price which is a very big amount but I think uh, that was a little short sightedness on our part because we didn't realize at the end of the day in all the turnover how much business how much would it contribute and as a percentage it would be less but once we went there then we realized the power of going multiple places and then I think we went to Pune, Surat, Delhi, and now we have gone four years back to Hyderabad also. So it's been a slow journey, but it's been a very wonderful journey. And a fruitful journey. And a very fruitful journey. <laughs> so uh, you, have, you must have seen the challenges those days, 92, when you joined, when, I mean, the, the international brands started coming to India, people were accepting, started accepting it. And there was a moment of globalization at that point of time. And today, when we talk about today's days, there, there are hundreds of brands which are already there and people want, know, they, they know what they want. So how, what are the challenges during those days and what are the challenges during these days? So I think the biggest challenge when uh, globalization happened, the India economy opened up and people started spending money, what the brands were coming in and they were getting in products and we didn't have the stores. Okay. Because in the sense is the store sizes were very small in those days, 1000 to 2000 square feet was also supposed to be a big store, but uh, the LGs of the world, the Samsungs of the world at that time, they also came in and uh, so they were bringing in large refrigerators, 500, 600 liters. They were bringing in 34 inches television, panels, uh, LCDs, uh, plasmas had not yet come in. So you didn't have stores and that is the time when we realized we need to increase the size of the stores. So there were a lot of uh, consumer, there were a lot of consumer uh, stores which did not increase the size. So I think that is what helped us a lot. And slowly and steadily, we became the go-to uh, for all the brands, for the premium products, and for any last size and all. And in those days, even the brands were experimenting. So what used to happen was, many a times, they used to bring in the product, and the products did not sell as they had envisaged. So that was the time when they used to come to us, say, okay, we have got this 200 pieces, would you be wanting to take it? And we were always very active in that. So we took it at a great deal and we sold it also at a great deal. And I think that was the birth when the one day offers of VJSL started coming. And I'll tell you, each and every, in those days, each and every one day offers was a super success. To an extent that by 6, 6.30, the stocks used to get over. Oh, wow. I still remember one uh, consumer of ours, one guest of ours at Borelli had come at 6.30 and the stock was over. I think it was for a microwave, if the offer if I remember right. And then he told my salesman, why don't you tell your bosses to stock as much as possible? Because we have so much trust on widget sales that whatever you will sell, you are going to come and buy. So it should not get over till the end of the day. So I think those were the days which were real fun, which were there. But how, what, what steps do you take to win consumer confidence in a, such a beautiful way? So I think uh, on this score again, I think from day one, uh, dad's philosophy has been consumer first. So he's, I've seen it. So uh, in those days, televisions, when they came, those were wall sets. So they typically used to get spoiled because the technology was such within a week, 10 days. And uh, I do not know even if you would be aware, we had uh, anybody who buys a television had to take a license from post office. 
Yo, I, I am not aware. <laughs> yeah, so anybody, so it was totally controlled by the government. So if you are buying a television, the day that we used to sell the television, dad used to sell the television. Next day, he had to apply with the customer's name and address and details to the post office. And within a week, the post office used to issue a blue color, like a passport, a license, telegraph license that okay. you have owned a television. So what used to happen is once that license is issued, you cannot replace the television. So the for before selling. Dad used to tell him, see, this is a new technology and don't worry, the walls may get spoiled, so the TV may not work. But we are there, we'll ensure that the tech company person comes and he does the job. And after, when if he sold a television during the day, then after he used to shut the store, uh, he used to go to the consumer's place to give a demo. Because TV in those days, very few could buy. It was a very big purchase. Like uh, today, I think buying a Mercedes may not be that big a purchase for the today's generation younger generation, but TV in those days was like in the entire colony only one person used to have. So that those were the rules. So the consumer used to be very, very surprised if without informing he's come after shutting the store to give me a demo. Then he always uh, was, I do not know where he learned all this because as I have earlier said, he's never been to MBA school or he's not a well-read also. But he had a system when somebody used to buy a television or any product. He used to make a card, a small card where the details of his purchase and there should be columns, okay. uh, serial number, date, nature of complaint, then the company used to give a complaint number that and when it's resolved. And that used to be as a desk on his, behind his desk, he used to keep all those cards stacked, date wise. So whenever the consumer used to come, he just had to ask him a purchase date, remove the card and follow up with the, log in the complaint with the company and uh, get it done. Vis-a-vis what used to happen as a general industry practice in those days was on the invoice, back of the invoice, all companies service telephone numbers were there. And at the time of the sale, 95% of the retailers in those days used to show the back. In case you have any problem, please contact. Vis-a-vis, we used to tell, we never printed company's name on there. And he used to always tell, any problem is that you come to me or you give me a call and I'll get it resolved. I think this is what has been traditionally uh, the reason why consumers have stayed and there are so many consumer stories that uh, one or two I would want to highlight. Yeah, please. So once I was in, uh, uh, we were opening a store in Vadodara, so I was there during the first week and there I met a young couple. So we just started chatting up and they said, you know, what a coincidence. I said, what happened? And they were smiling, both of them. Well, I am from the girl was from Mumbai and the boy was from Mumbai. Well, I'm from Mumbai and I've been buying always from Vijay Sales. My family has been always buying from Vijay Sales. And when I came here to Ahmedabad, I got married in Ahmedabad. And I came here and I realized my in-laws have also been buying from Vijay Sales. And now we were shifting to Vadodara. So we were thinking whether to buy from Vijay Sales Ahmedabad and come here or what to do. <laughs> and today we came to just check out a house and we see your store has opened. So what a coincidence it is. So I think this is think somewhere or the other. Nah. It's not that we give anything free or we are doing anything extra. I think the personal emotional connect of the consumer has been very strong. Another one very uh, strong emotional connect story I like to say. Normally people feel that it's not true. It's just built up. But it's something which even got me goosebumps. So one of our brand uh, company guys, so he's staying in Kurgaon. Uh, so he was narrating this. So he said, hey, we just got married and my wife is from uh, Mumbai. I said, very good. So he said, no, no. The reason why I'm saying you this is, hey, when one Sunday, he said, I want to go to Vijay Sales. So I said, she must be wanting to buy some micro or something. I said, why do you want to go? Let's rest. You want anything? I'll call up Vijay Sales and they'll say, oh, no, no, I just want to go to the store. I said, okay. He said, I felt possibly she wants to buy a mobile phone and gift it to me. So that's why she's not telling it. <laughs> Well, we went to your store, we went entered, my wife was there for five minutes and then she said, let's go back. So I was a little disturbed, so what's wrong? And she was also a little off mood when we were walking out. So in the car, I kept quiet. After five minutes, I asked her, what happened? She said, I was missing Mumbai. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked him twice, are you telling me just to pet me up or is it true? What <laughs> in Nilesh. I can never build such story. I was, that is the time when I realized what Vijay Sales is to a Mumbai car. 
so i think this is there has been some sort of bond we are very lucky uh, we've been able to do that there is a attachment of consumers with us but uh, do, don't you think the, with the uh, i mean technology coming to the fore the things have changed the way it used to be earlier with the consumers so yes today's generation doesn't believe in emotional things so they are all transactional we yeah. understand that and this is what causes a worry because today i'll tell you uh, many a times i come across where the younger consumer may possibly want to buy online but his parents says no if you are buying a television with my money then it's coming from which is or whichever is favorite store of that time is there so yes we do worry of that because today's young generation is different uh, they do not believe so much in the relationship and they are more practical uh, so possibly what the their parents used to like about shopping they did best uh, they do not want to spend their time in shopping they want to do something more better or maybe do some adventure trip or go out for a movie and something so that's a real cause of concern but then we are trying to get up and that is where i think uh, ashish my younger brother and karan comes into the place because they understand their generation better than myself and dad so we are trying to go in the app way also and on the online also so there are changes which are going on so technology is moving at a very fast pace nilesh i don't you fear that it can take your job some day and if it happens what will you do so one thing is for sure yes what you are saying is right technology is moving fast tomorrow possibly it may take the job but i always have a feeling that we still have a runway for another 15 20 years uh, and after that something new will come up because see if something goes away then something is there to take on see at the end of the day technology can possibly people may not want to come and buy in store but at the end of the day the product has to be delivered to the homes the product has to be installed the product has to be shown so there are a lot of things which would be there so maybe if something changes like that which i feel won't because see at the end of the day today uh, food delivery you take the example of food delivery uh, you can get everything yeah. within 20 minutes but at the end of the day every family once a week or once in two weeks wants to go out and experience experiential eating out and i think same thing is there then another take of mind is if people stop doing offline shopping and they have a lot of time on their hand and it's not that they stopped offline shopping so the budget is gone away they are buying but they may buy online or from other sources so what will they do of the rest of the time they'll have to start going out on holidays so if a sunday which was there meant for shopping and going out for movies is being replaced by online buying and netflix of the world then a sunday has to go for a lonala lonala trip slowly and steadily the lonala trip will end up being a two day three day singapore malaysia trip and then the family will realize the money of the shopping is still there is there and you need additional budget for all this so it's better we stop this and we go back to the offline shopping <laughs> and experience it so i think somehow or the other it's a, a little far fetched uh, that uh, offline uh, shopping may go away but yes things are moving at a very fast pace anything can happen but i'm sure if one door will close there will be 10 more doors which will be better which will open up so what vision do you foresee for vijay sales going ahead so i is what my vision is simply put uh, rather than looking at the scale it is basically all the people who are connected with us be it our consumers be it our team be it our vendors it should be a very fruitful relationship it should be a win win relationship so rather than looking out for more volume i would be happy if i meet a consumer who says this is what you all helped me when i needed me the most so on this i'll give you another story so once i met a consumer at uh, some uh, function so he said nilesh i have been buying from you for uh, uh, many years well, thank you sir for that he said do you know why i buy from you yes, sir you have to tell me well, not for discount or anything well once i gifted my mother in law uh, on a birthday a refrigerator and a washing machine and i did not tell my wife also so your people delivered it on the birthday day and the moment the people were there my mother in law called me and started shouting at me do you think i'm poor how how dare you take this liberty of sending me a refrigerator fridge and i was that i thought she'll be happy i had, my wife was next to me i told her uh, boss i did the what is wrong so she also said you you should have at least asked me you know how she is or what to do so my mother in law gave me an ultimatum i'm not keeping it please take it right now 
I didn't know what to do. I called up your store and I said, this is the situation. They said, sir, don't worry. Uh, we, are, we are bringing it back. And then I said, keep the money with you, but I'll buy something else later when I need it. They said, no, no, sir, don't worry. We'll, get, uh, we'll ensure the refund also. So that, that day, you all became our, my man Friday. And the very fact that you all were able, I would have been okay if you would have taken the product and not given me money also because the situation was such. So I think these are small, small incidents where my team is able to take decisions. Because this is what you have imbibed into this. So I think that is what has got us here. And this is what we feel will take us further. Because all said and done, whatever we may say of the young generation, maybe in their youth, they are not valuing relationship. They are not valuing emotional. But I think once the youth goes away, 5 years, 8 years, 10 years, when they are in their 30s or 35 plus, I think our genes, our genetic built up in India is such that the emotional connect will come and it will always be. So before we close, Nisha, I want to know three values that your father has imbibed in you and you are further imparting it to the younger generation or maybe the employees who are working with you here at the Dilson. So I think the biggest thing which uh, dad has employed in our from us is always think win-win and do not let anybody down. So if you have committed something, uh, stick to it, even if it means it's a loss. And the third most important thing is always think of your consumer first. Because if you take care of him, they will take care of your business automatically. Okay, one last question which is very, I'm very curious to know about. Vijay sales, why Vijay sales, why why Nanu, why not Nanu sales, because he started it. Yeah, so I, I'll tell you, so this uh, basically, uh, Vijay is uh, my dad's younger brother's name, and dad used to treat him like a son. So when he came to Mumbai, he was working with someone, but when his younger brother came and he said, I don't want to do a job, please open a shop for me, and that's how the name Vijay came. Oh. Wonderful story, very beautiful, love is there, I mean affection is there in the story. So before we close, wrap it up, finally there is a rapid fire round which we are going to do. I am not going to give you time to think about it. I will fire the questions at you and you have to rapidly answer all the questions. One business book that you love reading the most and what you have learned from it. So Principles by Ray Dalio, I think that's one of the best books which every businessman, every uh, person uh, who is into business should read. Basically, he lines out simple things. Okay? Stick to your fundamentals, you'll never go wrong. And the moment you go away from your fundamentals, hell will break loose. Okay. Uh, tell me one thing, one retailer or the brand that you admire a lot and why? So basically, I think uh, one of the biggest retailers whom I admire is Best Buy. For the simple reason is they had a bad time because of the online coming in. And the way they turn around, it's a marvelous story. And you've learned a lot from Pranasa? Yes. Okay. So everybody knows Dilesh is the man who's running, who's running the show along with his brother at Vijay Sale and now your son has also joined in. But nobody knows what do you do in your free time? What do you prefer to do? How do you enjoy your free time? So first I'll just make a slight correction. I think a dad and myself and younger brother and everybody is there. But I think this Vijay Sales is run by the entire team. And I think they without them we would have not been able to do it. So that is there. As far as uh, my free time is uh, concerned, most of the time I love reading and I love training the team members. So that is my passion, training. Okay. One sports that you love to play these days a lot? So I'm not much into sports, uh, but I'd love to do yoga and meditation. One quality of yours that you want others, retailers or the leaders to look up to you and learn from you? I think patience. Audience was also very patient and listened to us and enjoyed this conversation. I, I, even I also enjoyed this conversation a lot. Thank you, Nilesh, for your time today. Thank you for watching this episode of ET Retail Cafe. We'll be back again next week. Till then, bye.